Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In this tutorial I would like to quickly show you how to basically set up a chain animation between two cog elements and have them quickly and easily animated uh, and edited depending on your preferences. This method doesn't, doesn't use any complicated measures or anything that you haven't worked with before if you did any sort of basic animation and it will be quite an easy uh, thing to do in, in less than a few minutes especially if you know your way around Blender. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Please leave a like if you do and let's begin. Right, so we're now in our scene and we basically want to start creating our chain. Um, I mean, the chain is going to be something very, very basic. I'm actually gonna use the cube just to prove a point, uh, you know, just to show you guys how to basically do it. So, uh, you know, I've got this machine over here and I want to add a chain between, you know, this cog over here and I basically have a cog that's inside over here. You can probably tell it's right about there. If I hold Z, you'll be able to see it a lot uh, easier. So that's the cog over there. Now this is a, you know, work in progress mesh, so nothing in here is finalized, but basically I'm just working on this model. Right, so I want to add a chain around this cog that goes all the way to that other cog and, and basically spins on, uh, you know, I, I, I should be able to control it through animation. So the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna shift A to add a curve. Uh, we're gonna do a circle. So our circle is basically generated wherever our um, 3D cursor is, which in this case is right over here at the center of this cog. Um, right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to scale the circle and now we also want to rotate the circle but we'll just go to our rotation tool and we'll rotate it, it doesn't really matter to whatever angle because we're going to change it down here to 90. Uh, and now since I've got it rotated again I'm going to scale it so that it fits around the cog uh, like so. Now, as you can see, the circle is not exactly positioned with the cog, so I'm just going to press G to move it, uh, you know, from uh, left to right like so. And if you press middle mouse button, it will allow you to move it on one axis only, like that. Right, so now that I've got that, uh, you know, this curve over, um, you know, set up, now we want to create a new mesh, which is our cube. And basically, we don't want to make it, we're just going to leave it as, you know, the size that it is right now, the small size. Uh, once we have the cube on, we'll go over into the uh, modifiers, we'll add an array modifier. And basically, not, we'll not change any settings as of yet to the array modifier, uh, but just so you can see, it's basically uh, doing a two, you know, it's making this, duplicates this mesh and moves it at this offset that we have over here, or we can try and do this offset and, and so on. Uh, and the next modifier we're gonna add is a curve modifier, and we'll use this eyedropper tool to select our curve. As you can see, it's already changed the shape of the cube, but it's it's not exactly moved the cube into the position of where we want the, you know, where, where the uh, circle is, and that's where we want our mesh to go to. Now, if you use these def deformation axes, you'll be able to move the, um, uh, you know, you'll be able to move the cubes around and try and better fit them to this curve. And it's very important to, based on based on what what axis you're going to use for your um, chain and for your for your Bezier circle, it's very important that you you are aware that these these deformation axes are going to be the bread and butter and some of these things that you're going to change in here. Now, what we want to do, uh, we want to set up the offset, you know, try this other offset. So I'm using, I'm using the Y offset, and if I press these, you will see that you get different results than from what we were getting using the X um, offset. So again, very important to know these things, but the X offset is the one that we basically need. What I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna increase the count so it forms a full circle like so. And, uh, you know, the offset wise, I think we should be okay um, in terms of the offset. I think that will be okay. Now, if we want to try and move this, you'll see that as I, you know, move the circle or, or the cube around, it will basically create all these very weird shapes. It won't, it won't do what we want it to do, basically. We want to have this around here. So we're just going to go and add some constraints to our object by saying that we want a copy location, for example, constraint of the of this um, Bezier circle. 
and now you see that it's positioned the cube around there, right? Now the other problem that we have in this situation is that we can't move the uh, cube anymore, so we can't really animate it, rotate it, and that's a problem. So we've got these axes over here that we can deactivate, and this will allow us basically to rotate it. So I've just deactivated the x-axis, and now it allows me to rotate. And you can basically see what's happening, as you can see this um, movement um, um, axis that just you see you see how it moves from left to right and that will allow our our uh, boxes to our cube to rotate around the the circle um, so we're just going to go back into the modifier and add a you know a few more counts to this now you can do this with whatever mesh you want whatever type of mesh you want and you'll get different results based on your settings um, so for example here i would need a 2.15 and that should give us almost an even spread. Again, you can play with the settings until you get the right, uh, the right amount. Okay, so we've got that set up in there um, and it's rotating properly based on you know, our constraint that we added, the copy location constraint and the modifiers. Now what we want to do is we want to make the chain go upwards to the other cog and basically rotate uh, like that. So one other thing that you could also do is you can go to, to the uh, fit type and change it to fit curve. And then if you select this curve, it will basically rotate around it and it'll always be as big as the curve. Uh, well, that's it, at least that's in principle, that's what it should happen, but it doesn't always work out that way. Right, okay. So we're just gonna go um, in our orthographic side view and we'll press Alt Z on the keyboard so we can see through all the objects. And what we want to do now is we want to get this, we want to select the curve, the Bezier circle, and we want to press tab to go into edit mode. And now if we, if we um, you know, select all of these points here, you can drag this upwards like that and just bring it over there. But as you can see, it's created this sort of, um, you know, quite a bit of a stretch. So in order to fix those stretches, you can start manipulating these side um, um, handles over here. Uh, one other thing that you can do is you can select everything and right click and click subdivide and that will give you more um, and more basically more, more things to play with as you can see over here so I can um, you know select all of these and just scale them uh, and then just move them a little bit like that again we have a problem because it's it's obviously way too um, well it's, it's not constrained enough as you can see so we can try and pull them like so you know, try and constrain them a bit more. And it's all up to, it's all really up to you and, and how, you know, what's what's your application and how much you're trying to, um, you know, play with these around because they are fixed, uh, they are fixed curves. So whatever you're doing here, it doesn't mean, I mean, you can change it, you can animate the change of the curve as well if you want to. But basically if we press tab, now you can, you can clearly see how the curve looks like. It's not exactly ideal. Um, as you can see, you need to work out on these angles until you get the right one. So let's say this around here is almost okay. And I do mean almost, because it's, it's definitely not perfect. Um, so again, you may want to play with these settings or, you know, as I've said, it, it's all up to you based on what, is, what, what sort of desired effect you want. So I'm just gonna leave it like so. I'm gonna press uh, Alt Z to go back, and you can see that the um, the cubes have now moved around the um, uh, curve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our cube, and then if I Alt Z again, you can see that the cube is extending all all, all around us because we have this fit curve. If we were on a fixed count at 26, you can see it's not enough to basically cover the whole thing but we'll just uh, leave it a fit curve and now you can see that we can rotate this. So how can we quickly animate this thing? So I'm just gonna go over here and basically I'm gonna go to frame zero. Uh, you can set these all up to zero if you want or you can just leave them like that. I'm just gonna press E on the keyboard while hovering over these settings to save the keyframes. I'm gonna go to key 75 um, and then I'm just gonna start changing the settings like so and i'm gonna i'm gonna save it again as a keyframe so when i press play you can see that spinning and i already had the cog on it you know the cog already had an animation set up exactly like that and you can see how it's basically well they're obviously not matching but the idea here is for not for them to match you need to fine tune your setting to whatever you want and obviously create a chain that would actually link properly on a cog like this or whatever cog you've got and so on. This is just a very simplified version of a cog uh, that I've put in here. 
Uh, but but anyway, but basically, I hope you guys found this um, t t short tutorial um, uh, useful. Um, and pl please leave a like and, and a comment if you've got a suggestion or anything to say. But I do hope you found this useful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So thank you for watching, and take care.